Chino in Malaysia writes to me and he says, it's very clear in my memory that you have talked quite a few times regarding the sound differences in CD players versus a ripped CD media. Oh boy, this is where I get in trouble. You said it. <laughs> um, and it was due to the jitter and noises found in those two types of media. But I noticed there's many high-end network streamer storages with CD rippers like Orender from Korea, and there's many arguments in ripped media sound quality using a normal CD ripper versus a high-end CD ripper. In your opinion, do you find any advantage or major sound quality differences by playing a CD media ripped by a high-end CD ripper with a high-end audio DAC? Whew. Well, years ago, that was true. And I think over time, it has become less true. We used to use something called EAC, which was exact audio copy. I think it's still probably available. I think it's a free program. I think it might, might only be for Windows. And it went back and forth a couple of times to make sure every single bit was, was captured nicely. And yeah, we definitely heard differences back then, and it was important to use that. Our very first transport the, what was that called? Um, the perfect wave transport, I guess. I don't remember. Uh, anyway, whatever it was. See, there's the old memory. But the very first one we ever built years and years ago used a system like EAC to go back and read and reread, make sure every single bit was captured properly. And that helped, but the biggest deal of that transport was the digital lens built inside. Now, a digital lens is our fancy marketing term for a smart buffer, okay? And why is a smart buffer important? Well, when you're ripping a CD in real time, the, the transport's moving up and down in speed. There's all kinds of jitter going on. It's the clock that is that's controlling everything has to go up and down in order to match the speed of the drive. If it's having trouble reading something, it's going to slow down. If it's flying through there, great, it'll speed up. But all of that is very prone to jitter. So what our digital lens did was basically had a big bucket, and as the clock, incoming clock, moved up and down, it filled up our buffer, and it was big enough that it could handle all of the perturbations, all the changes in, in that incoming data. And it filled up, and then we had a fixed low jitter clock that output that data. So over here is chaos, jitter-filled chaos, and over here is perfection coming out at a perfect low jitter rate. Make sense? So that's what a digital lens did. And that made a huge difference, and we still use it to today. Those are the big differences. Uh, my friend and the former editor of Stereophile Magazine, John Atkinson, did a, a, a study a while ago, and he looked at various rippers to see if there was any difference in the actual data that came out. And what he found is in 99 point blah, blah, blah percent, there were no difference in the data whatsoever. A 24 times Mac or Windows ripper did the same job in terms of veracity, in terms of accuracy of data being ripped off the disk. So I think a modern ripper, if it falls into that, and most of them do, to where it is ripping perfectly that data and then putting it into a hard drive for later play, then no, it makes no difference whatsoever. It can't. And here's why. Very briefly, I don't like these to go too long. Once you place something in a big giant buffer like a digital lens or more specifically a hard drive there is no clock associated with it there is no timing information you can't have jitter right jitter is a timing problem of moving back and forth when it should be steady and that all comes from a clock and there are no clocks in a hard drive so 
Now the problem you have is getting it out of the hard drive and there you need another digital lens and all this other stuff and, and galvanic isolation. You need to you know, get away from the computer and the noise of it all. But when it's sitting in the hard drive, whether it's ripped with a brilliant, you know, super expensive device or a cheap ass one, doesn't make any difference. The bits are the same sitting on that hard drive. It's getting it out of the hard drive that's a problem. We'll talk about that later. Okay. Hope that answers your question. All right, take it easy.